Well, good evening, everyone, or good morning, or good afternoon, or whenever it is you're deciding to join me. It's lovely to see you again, or if you're new, a very warm welcome to you also. This is What's For Tea, and my name is Cheryl, and I'm just going to take you through a very easy stuffed pasta shell recipe, and this one combines with a beautiful bolognese. This is such a tasty recipe, guys. Highly recommended if you like bolognese sort of pasta type dishes. This is one of our favourites and one I haven't done for such a long, long time. We used to eat stuffed pasta shells quite a lot, but like I said, not something I've done for ages. So I thought I'd give it a go today with a couple of wee tweaks from my normal recipe. And I just wanted to share it because like I said, it is absolutely delicious and at this time of the year lovely and comforting and warming so this is what I've got for you if you want to make it along with me but as usual all of the ingredients and their weights will be in the description box down below so I've got grams and cups down there just in case you want to check it later yep so let's go and see what we've got today so the first thing I've got is one tablespoon of tomato puree. I've got some olive oil for frying, one tablespoon of dried Italian herbs, five garlic cloves. Now you can mince this or just do what I do and just finely slice it because we like the wee bits of garlic in amongst our mixture. I've got some large pasta shells or conciglioni. It just depends what you can find. I used 17 of these. I've used 800 grams, which is two standard cans of chopped canned tomatoes, 180 mils of red wine, one large onion which I finely diced, 250 grams of mascarpone cheese, but you could use ricotta if you prefer. They both work wonderfully in this. You'll need two standard balls of fresh mozzarella. Now they're about 125 grams each, so you're looking for 250 grams of fresh mozzarella. Grated Parmesan cheese, now just use as much as you like. I've also got 500 grams, which is about a pound of minced beef, a handful of fresh basil, one large carrot, which I finely diced, and you'll also need some salt and pepper as you go along. So that's it, that's all your ingredients. Woof! <laughs> So these are the tomatoes that I'm using. Just so happens these ones have got garlic in, but you can use whatever ones you like. I just prefer to use the chopped ones though. And this is the wine that I'm using. This is just slightly more than I need, but it's fine. And this is the mozzarella that I'm using. Like I said, I'm using two of these and there's 125 grams in each one, but these are just standard size. And I'm also going to use 17 of these pasta shells. Now you can use whatever ones you like, obviously, just make sure they're nice and big. Like I said, you can use mascarpone or ricotta, both work wonderfully in this. I ended up going for the mascarpone just because it's got a smoother texture. And you'll also need an oven proof dish as well. So the first thing you want to do is go over to your cooker and on a medium heat, pop in some olive oil for frying. Get it up to nice warm heat and pop in your carrots followed by your onion. Just give it a wee stir around. And I'm going to pop in a wee dash of salt, no more than half a teaspoon. And also some black pepper as well. Just give it another wee stir around. Now you're going to pop on your lid and let this cook for 10 to 15 minutes just until your veggies are nice and soft. And I was happy with this. Now you're just going to pop in your minced beef. Now you just want to break this up with your spoon. You want to make sure it's browned all over until you move on. This will take about five minutes. I love this time-lapse feature. I, I find it hilarious, especially when there's something going on on the background. Great bee feature, actually. And I was happy with this. Could you believe that was five minutes went by there? Oof. Now you want to pop in three of your garlic cloves and just stir them through. Pop your lid on and just let this infuse for a few minutes. Now 
And now you want to whack your heat up a wee bit. You know, you want to raise the heat slightly. So we're now going to add the red wine. Give it a wee stir through and pop your lid on for five minutes. Just let that simmer away for five minutes and then you can add your tomato puree. Lots of stirring in this recipe, guys. <laughs> and once that's fully mixed in, you can pop in your Italian herbs. Now, I think this is just like oregano and basil and that kind of thing, you know, just dried, obviously. Give it a wee stir through. Then you can pop in your tomatoes. This is just two standard cans, like I said. And you also want to add in a can of water because this is going to be simmering for an hour and a half, so you don't want it drying out. Just give it a good stir. Reduce your heat to low, and you want to simmer this for an hour. We're going to come back in an hour. So while you're waiting, you can get your stuffing done. So grab yourself a mixing bowl, and then your mozzarella balls. And you want to chop these up quite finely. Remember, they're going to be getting stuffed into your shell. So you do want this as small as you can get it. Again, I'm going to be using the time lapse here. I love this. I don't know why it amuses me so much. It just does. It's so satisfying. So once you're happy with your mozzarella, just pop it into a bowl. And then you're going to add your other two cloves of garlic. I've just chopped this up again, just a bit more finely, or a bit finer. And then you could pop in your mascarpone cheese. You only want 200 grams. Keep the other 50 back for later. And a good handful of basil chopped up. And with a fork, I prefer to use a fork. I think it works best. Just mix all this together. Just like that. And that's ideal. You just want to set this aside until later, until we need to stuff the shells. So this was me an hour later. And we're now going to leave the lid off and give it another half an hour with the lid off. And it's going to reduce down a good bit. So pop in another wee bit of salt, a tablespoon of sugar. This is going to, you know, combat any bitterness that might be in there from the tomato and your other 50 grams of mascarpone cheese. That's going to give a lovely creaminess. Like I said, just let this simmer for another 30 minutes. So it's now time to go over to our shells. So pop them into a bowl, put a wee bit of salt in there and cover the whole lot with some boiling water from the kettle. Now you want to let this sit for about 25, 30 minutes. You want to, you know, soften these up, but you don't want them too soft because you've still got to, you know, they've still got to sit in your hand and be filled. So you don't want them, you know, completely collapsing. So once they've had their time, just drain them and set them to the side to cool for a couple of minutes. Then go back to your mince mixture and this will be ready by now. So all you have to do now is assemble. So grab yourself your glass dish or your oven proof dish, pop your mince mixture into the bottom and then go back to your shells. So all we're going to do now is stuff these with your ricotta or your mascarpone mixture, whatever cheese you've used. So I decided I could squeeze another wee bit in there. So I've gone back for some more. Yeah. <laughs> you fill these up as much as you like, guys. And then just sit it on top of your mince. Just sort of nestle it in there. This is my reproduction line. So like I said, I used 17 of these. There are four of us, so we all got four. And Mr. What's for Tea got an extra one, because he's a greedy person. You just want to push them down slightly. You don't want to push them right under. Or they'll just completely disappear underneath. And this is ideal. So you just want to pop this into your oven 
between 25 and 30 minutes. Gas Mark IV, 180C or 200F for around 25 to 30 minutes. And this was mine just out of the oven. Lovely. It's absolutely roasting though. Leave this for a wee while before you attempt to eat it. You'll end up scorching yourself. And just at the end, you want to pop on some Parmesan cheese or some pecorino, you know, or mozzarella, whatever you want. And then some fresh basil just to finish it off. And this was beautiful. Well, this is comfort food at its best. And it's been quite cold today, so this was very much welcomed by everyone. And that's it just on the plate there. And we just had some wee mini garlic dough balls and I popped some black pepper on the top as well. Absolutely beautiful. So that was it. <laughs> that's another wee quick recipe. Now, obviously, it does take a wee while to make. You've got your hour and a half for it simmering and then half an hour in the oven. And it might seem like a bit of a faff, but it's one of the tastiest pasta dishes I've tried for a long, long time. And like I said, highly recommended if you like this sort of thing. So, yeah. So thank you very much, guys, again, for popping over and checking out this wee recipe. And it's going to be Halloween in a few days. And what usually happens at Halloween, I, I used to buy sweets and things for the kids. But what I've been doing for the last few years, I actually make wee treats and, and hand those out. And, you know, like wee cupcakes or candy apples, that type of thing. So if you want me to do a wee video on the treats that I'm giving the kids or the treats that I'm making, just let me know. In fact, what I'll do is I'll pop a poll up in the corner. So if you click the I symbol, you'll be able to vote, you know, you'll be able to vote there or I might actually pop it up on the community page because I know that not everyone will have held on to the end of the video so no scrap that what I'll do is I'll put it on my community page and you can vote there because more people will see it there so like I said guys thank you very much again for popping over and checking out my video you know it really does mean ever so much to me I'm just so so lucky that you do come back and you are enjoying what I'm doing so from the bottom of my heart you know it really does mean so much and thank you ever so much. So from our wee humble kitchen in Scotland to wherever you are in the world, mind to take care of yourselves. Until next time I see you, lots of love, take care and bye for now. Bye now. <laughs>